right, gang, here is just a sample of some of the headlines that came out immediately after the debate. I, your page of professor was up late last night. I'm a little loopy this thing because I wanted to get the ethos of what happened literally seconds after the debate closed. Look at this from Politico, from freaking left wing Politico is embarrassingly left wing at this point. And look at this headline. Biden is toast. <laughs> Three words. Biden is toast. The byline Democrats are in full freak out over the president's debate performance. Here's a quick excerpt from the article. Quote, one major Democrat donor and Biden supporter who spoke on the condition of anonymity, of course, doesn't matter. Biden wouldn't remember his name to begin with. He said it was time for the president to end his campaign. This person described Biden's night as the worst performance in history. And look at this gang from the freaking Drudge Report, the backstabber par excellence. This was on Drudge before the debate had even ended. This was last night. Look at this. Operation Replace Biden. Dems scramble with 130 days to go. Debate catastrophe. <laughs> I mean, it looks like old Drudge wants back on the Trump train. I mean, I just I look at the look at the image of Biden that Trump is uh, Trump that Drudge is using up there. I mean, that says it all. I mean, look at that facial expression. It's so sad. The clueless, confused look. I mean, just I mean, that frankly sums up his presidency brilliantly. And of course, we've got the satirical Babylon B. Uh, <laughs> They, they, I don't know how they come up with these headlines so fast. This was up literally seconds after the debate. Trump indicted for murdering elderly man on CNN. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny in so many ways. Trump indicted again, of course, right? This is what is fifth indictment. Trump indicted again, but this time for murdering a helpless elderly man on live television. Absolutely brilliant. Here is CNN's palpable panic after the debate that i am hearing from democrats is not like anything that i have heard in this campaign so far and a lot of it has to do with first of all there was a deep frustration about trump's lies i mean he lied a lot tonight right. but the the problem for biden was that trump was able to take some sometimes incredible falsehoods and turn them into some kind of argument whereas biden's answers were in a lot of cases not coherent, deeply problematic, that he was not able to uh, take pretty straightforward answers and answer them to the American public. And, and then also at some points, bringing things up that teed up Trump attacks. So uh, there is a, a real concern here tonight that there's been some real damage done that cannot be undone. Biden solidified the perce perception among voters, but especially among his base, they were hoping that tonight would be a game changer. They are now seeing a president who is in the White House, who they do not necessarily believe can can do this for another four years. Now, make sure you get what you just said. That don't 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 get distracted about her pathetic accusations about Trump being a lion. So she, she's trying to keep her job at this point. So she's got to She's got to drop stuff like that. What she just said there was so absolutely key. Do you hear what she said? Did you hear what she said? The, 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 the buried lead in that. There was very real damage done. This is a quote. There was real damage done that cannot be undone. That That's that's an easy way of just basically. That's a yeah, that's a that's a that's a layman's way of basically saying you can't spin this. You you can't you can't spin this. Uh, uh, Trump had a really bad night. Trump he was he was lying. But nobody's talking about replacing him. <laughs> if, if 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 Trump wasn't good then Biden 
was beyond disastrous. There's there's no equivocating the two. There's no spinning this. Also, you have got to click on that link below and treat yourself and your family and friends to the most amazing soap I've ever tried made by our good friends over at Old Country Soap. Made on a farm in South Dakota using traditional techniques, they use only locally sourced special ingredients without the harsh chemicals that can dry out your hair and skin. Every bar includes pure and unfiltered bentonite clay that works wonders. It helps to soothe and relieve dry and sensitive skin. It's known for its healing properties that help with psoriasis and eczema. It also pulls dirt and oil out from your pores, helping to clear up acne. I mean, it's amazing. It works great for hair. You could use it to shave. It's safe for pets. The scent alone is worth it. And of course, on top of all that, it's made right here in the USA. Use promo code TURLY for an exclusive 20% discount off your order. And every order will include an extra gift. Just pay the shipping. It's more than worth it. You're going to love it. So go ahead, treat yourself, reward yourself with this amazing Patriot product. You will not be disappointed. Click on that link below right now. Biden's debate, you heard her, Biden's debate was supposed to save his campaign. It only ended up doing further damage to an already damaged campaign. And that damage, according to this far left activist disguised as a journalist over at CNN, she's pathetic. That damage cannot be undone. Voters are not going to be able to unsee this train wreck or car wreck. Even Chris Wallace, freaking Chris Wallace, formerly of Fox, now comfortably situated among his liberal ilk over at CNN. Even Chris Wallace had to look away. Two of them decided after November of 2022 that he was going to seek the presidency when there were so many people who thought he should have turned it over to a new generation. And this has been, quite frankly, a, a, a car accident in slow motion that we've seen over and, and building and questioning it. And, you know, as, as has been pointed out, Joe Biden sought this debate at this remarkably early time because he knew he was losing and he needed to change the narrative. Yeah. And he did change the narrative. He sunk his campaign to that. A car accident in slow motion. It's not a train wreck, whether you could use that metaphor or you could use Chris Wallace's. It's a car crash in slow motion. And that car crash in slow motion, according to Mr. Chris Wallace, just sunk Biden's campaign. I think he's mixing metaphors there, but we'll leave it there. And did you notice, did you notice Wallace said the quiet part out loud? Did you notice that? He said the part that everyone in the Biden camp and at CNN have always known, but they've been doing everything they can to hide from us. Biden is losing. Biden's people know he's losing. Biden is losing this election. Chris Wallace just admitted that. Biden is the, the whole purpose of this debate is because we all know he's losing and he needed to change the narrative. That's why he forced the debate and he did change the narrative. The new narrative is now he just sunk his campaign. According to Chris Wallace, the Biden campaign has officially imploded as of last night. That is the assessment, the universal assessment of CNN. Now, not to be undone, here is Democrat operative Van Jones. There's no two ways about it. That was not a good debate for Joe Biden. Ben? Um, That was painful. Uh, I love Joe Biden. I work for Joe Biden. Um, he didn't do well at all. Uh, he, he did not do well at all. And he looked, you know, I'll give you the analysis. You know, you kind of have the, the old man versus the con man. Uh, I can walk you through how I'm supposed to see it and say it, but I just want to speak from my heart. Um, I love that guy. That's a good man. He loves his country. Uh, he's doing the best that he can. Uh, but he had a test to meet tonight. 
uh, to restore confidence uh, uh, of, of the country and of the base, and he failed to do that. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, we're still far from our convention, and there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. Um, but that was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden, and it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic, it's pain of what we saw tonight. Yeah, do, again, don't get sidetracked by all the BS he's throwing out there. Um, focus, focus, on, focus on the truth. Focus on the clarity. It's not panic, it's pain. It's, it's, it's beyond panic. You got to let that hit you. Last night, according to Van Jones, l- last night was, it went beyond panic. Now we're talking actually writhing pain here. This is coming from a former Obama administrative official. And, he, and you heard him. He's, he is openly calling on Biden to drop out. I mean, let's just say it. This was a major Democrat figure coming out and openly calling on Biden to drop out and literally end his pain. I mean, that's, I mean, there's just no two ways about it. Now, gang, you just, I mean, again, just to put this all in perspective, you have to get this, what that montage you heard earlier and what they're saying now cannot both be true. That montage earlier about tribe, about uh, Biden being so vigorous and virile and so forth. And what you're hearing now cannot both be true. If Biden is truly at the top of his game, sharp as a tack, well, then he just had a bad night last night. Reagan did in his first debate. Obama did in his first debate against against, uh, Romney in 2012. I mean, okay, let's move on. All right, a bad debate. You know, let's, let's, let's dust off and let's, Let's get back to work. That's what they would be saying if that montage, everything we heard from that montage was true. But if that was a Grabian, I think, montage, thank you guys again for putting that together. If that montage were a bunch of lies, if they were actively and deliberately covering up for someone they knew was cognitively degenerate, then everything they're saying last night and this morning makes total sense. Because they got caught. The mask got ripped off. You freaking liars. Now, if that was the mood at CNN. You can only imagine. You can. You can only imagine what was happening over. At MSNBC. I mean. Just roll the tape. Slight cold as well. So I understand not feeling well. And, you know, obviously Joe Biden comes in with certain deficits. He has a stutter. You know, he is, it it is more difficult for him to communicate for that reason. So there's a lot to mitigate the way that he speaks. And you can understand it. And we've observed him for a long time. That said, um, I too was on the phone throughout much of the debate um, with um, Obama, world people, with Democrats, um, with people who are political operatives, with campaign operatives. My phone really never stopped uh, buzzing throughout. And the um, universal reaction was somewhere approaching panic. Hmm. Um, The people who were texting with me were um, very concerned um, about uh, President Biden seeming extremely feeble, seeming extremely weak. And you know, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier. President Biden had one job tonight and it was it, it one primary job. And yes, it was to litigate Donald Trump's, you know, criminality and, and all of those things. But he had to settle his own party. Mm-hmm. He needed to settle Democrats. Democrats, you know, they always talk about the Democrats are bedwetters and Democrats are always panicking. Yes, Democrats are always panicking. They're always scared. You, right. They're always thinking they're going to lose. Like Democrats are, are very pessimistic. They're, they, this is just neurotic. who they are. They're neurotic. But Joe Biden's job was to reassure them tonight. His job was to calm his party, to make them feel that, yes, I can do this. I have four more years in me. I have the ability uh, and the stamina and the strength to do four more years. He did not do that. He did the opposite of that. 
he made them more panicked. Mm -hmm. The people who were texting me were even more panicked. They actually expected it to be better than it was. And now they're in a, I, I won't say a full-fledged panic, but it's getting there. And are the are people that you're talking to who are expressing these concerns, are these people who are involved in democratic politics or yes. are these liberals watching TV? This is not liberals watching TV. These are, these are campaign people. Mm -hmm. These are people who are either democratic operatives. These are people who are former, you know, sort of Obama, Obama world administration people. These are people who are in the business. Okay. So the, the civilians are also panicking. Uh, they're also <laughs> texting me, but I was trying to kind of ignore the civilians and really talk to the campaign folks. Um, people are, um, they're worried and there is, you know, it's not a, a full drumbeat yet, but there is talk of, look, here's the thing. We know, I, I know a lot of politicians. I just happen to know a lot of them yeah. at a lot of levels. They all believe that they have a unique ability to run the race that they passionately want to run. And I know for a fact that Joe Biden passionately believes that he is the only person who can beat Donald Trump. And he has evidence of it because he did it before. Right. He knows that he has certain demographic strengths that Donald Trump cannot counter. He is the real working class white guy that's actually Donald Trump's base. So he knows how to talk to them. He, he believes that he is the only person that can do it. The problem is after tonight, his party doesn't believe that. Again, I uh, don't get distracted by all the Blatant nonsense that she just that she just has a habit of spewing out every single night. Stay focused. Stay focused on again the truth of what she just said. I mean, oh, just just look at it. Look at it. They look like they were at a funeral. They were they look like they were at a at a funeral for someone who just suddenly died. I mean, I mean, let's just say it. I mean, the far left activists over at MSNBC looked as if they were staring into the abyss, into the abyss for them of an imminent return of Trump. And if you thought that meltdown was bad, <laughs> check out what was going on over at the far left Young Turks. Time to split screen is killing Biden yep. because he's got his mouth open. He looks confused, doesn't know where he is. He's lost his train of thought at least twice in like disastrous shape. Those are gonna be played a billion times in viral video after viral video. So this is an epic disaster. It like, I see people online saying, well, okay, that answer wasn't so bad. No, it doesn't, any particular answer doesn't matter at all. This thing is over. He looks like he's barely surviving. I don't mean the debate, I mean life. And so, there's no person that has a single brain cell left in their head who thinks that Joe Biden is the best candidate to take on Donald Trump. You would have to be even crazier than Donald Trump to think that. This thing is over, over, it's, I'll guarantee you this. I, I would bet any, show me a Democratic politician and I will bet them any amount of money that Joe Biden's going to lose this election if he's the candidate. It's a guaranteed loss. All right. Our producer Micah just said there that that background is not a green screen. It's just whatever Democrat city they're in. That's hilarious. There, yeah. Here's what senior White House correspondent over at Fox is uh, is reporting. I don't know, Jack, Jackie Heinrich. Um, according to her sources, quote, very well connected Democrat source tells me the House and the Senate are GOPs for now. Uh, the, the, the GOP again. This is what they're concerned about. They're concerned about the down ticket effect of this right now. Uh, the Senate is a foregone conclusion at this point, and it looks like it looks like Biden just did us the greatest favor ever. We're going to keep the House now because no one's going to be coming out voting for Biden. And if no one's coming out for Biden, the down ticket Democrats are going to suffer as well. Uh, everyone again, quote, everyone is freaking out. Biden needs to go, but no way they replace him unless he agrees. So. The obvious question that literally everyone is asking this morning is, are the Democrats really going to do this? Are they really going to actively try to replace Joe?